Good day to you my fellow endoskeletons, I'm Kenator and welcome back for another Starbase progress report. We're on week 32 of 2020 and if you're new here I bring you the latest news and updates of everything Starbase every Monday. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss out. Now let's get to it. Following on from last week's big Lowry quote, he's only gone and beaten it with a big FAQ post this time round. I think everyone should be aware of this information so let's dive in. The first question is will the universe expand in the future and how will it affect players and their property? Lowry replies the universe is built to expand, but expansions are decided based on how the game plays out. If expansion happens it doesn't have an effect on any existing planet or moons property doesn't disappear, but transferring some static property like stations and cities is most likely more expensive than just building fresh ones from scratch. The second question is will you add planets, new moons and other celestial objects? Larry replies, most likely at least something. Currently we are working on the new dust ring to Eos, which also allows dust clouds and nebulas outside the dust ring. The third question, will our sun and other real world stars be added to the universe? Lara replies, the Starbase universe is not located in any particular galaxy at this moment. So all this remains to be seen. The fourth question is, if stars will be a thing, will we be able to orbit them and build bases near them? Lowry replies, currently there are no plans allowing closer approach of the star. The fifth question, will there be any direct energy or propellant replenishment from the star? Lara replies, only solar panels are planned at this moment. For the sixth question we have, will the skybox be changed to something different from the current blue theme and will it be high res in the future? Lowry replies, we are in the process of changing all elements to individual parts, which will result in infinite-ish resolution. There are no plans currently about the colours of the visible universe. The seventh question, what kind of ores will be mineable on the moons? Lara replies, exact details are not yet decided, but the plan is to have minerals unique for the moons. The eighth question is, would it be possible to voxel mine the moon surface and thus make quarries and tunnels? Lara replies, currently not, but we are also testing technology which could allow mining of the moons in future. If the technology works, the first version supports only holes or quarries, but not horizontal tunnels. For the ninth question we have, will there be some kind of gates or warp travel between different systems or distant parts of the universe? Lowry replies, we'll introduce fast travel gates between Eos and the moons after player built stations are available. However, this fast travel method will not be fast enough to travel between planets if there someday will be more planets. For the 10th question we have, will we eventually be able to explore Eos upper atmosphere and build stations there? Lara replies, currently there aren't any plans for this feature. In the 11th question we have, is it possible to reach the borders or end of the universe? Lara replies, there are no limits, just vast emptiness. For the 12th question we have, will there be any NPC, hostile AI ships or drones? Lowry replies, not in a traditional sense, however it's possible that one day YOLO controlled drones attack players on their own. And for the 13th question we have, will there be any places of interest like raidable stations and cities run by NPCs? Moon caves and caverns, abandoned lootable handmade stations. Lowry replies, once players are free to build, destroy and abandon anything, the places of interest will grow exponentially. And the final question we have is, will there be any cosmic sources of radiation, like gamma, heat, EM, etc? Will there be devices that emit these kinds of hazards? Lowry replies, yes, the new dust ring will include hazardous areas, and so will new dust clouds and nebulas. So that was a lot of great new information there. Some of it I knew, some of it was new to me as well. But that's not all, we've still got the progress report, so let's get on to it. The main design features worked on last week were the demolition job, the pincer shipwreck has been designed and added to the spawn list. Also for the demolition job, the scrap attractor's position has been adjusted so collected parts won't float through the floor. Damage model tests and adjustments have been made. 14 new ships have been added to the game's economy configurations. No telling yet which ones, but I do hope one of them is mine. Inventory tooltips for items have been improved to include more information. Design for cosmetic shop UI is underway. Design for the ability to change position and properties of quick bars are underway as well. And design for the ability to create custom advertisement signs in game has been started. For station design this week, we have Ruba Station has been added for the ongoing PvP event. Now that PvP event is the tournament that is taking place that Kai from Frozen Bike is currently running for everybody. There's a big prize up for grabs. 
Not just credits for closed alpha, but the ability to pick and name a colour to use on ships in the Starship Designer. And that will carry on into early access and the full game. So quite a big prize up for grabs here, and many will be competing hard to get that. Now rumour has it this new station may be a Proya-like empty framework station that can serve as an arena to fight inside of. If that is the case, I will dub it the Thunderball. Two teams enter, one team leaves. Drop me a comment below if you get the reference. Now onto the gameplay updates. Object thickness and hit angle now affect projectile damage. This is a huge and much needed balance fix, as currently a small and thin floor plate can take the same damage as a full size armour plate can. I'm really happy to see this change as it will be good for the game in the long run, and take better advantage of that amazing voxel damage that we have. Fixes made to scrap detection and deletion system. Lifeline warp and stun are disabled upon insurance transfer. And locking a lifeline bound chair with a cargo frame unbinds it. Tractor beam related bugs disabled. Needs refactoring for proper multiplayer support. Players standing on ship cargo can no longer push cargo or the ship. And an issue that prevented picking up welded beams has been fixed. For UI updates we have the mining backpack now correctly update its slots when using a shop. Work on adding additional slots to the backpack is underway. Work on fixing levers not being droppable is underway. Company roster not sending group invites has been fixed. And work on adding audio support for the resource bridges is underway. For audio this week we have the socket tool audio support has been added. Cargo beam and frame audio support has been added. And thruster sound tweaks have been made. Starship Creator updates this week are new modules for the Spaceship Designer are under design. Material tool has been tested and fixes and improvements requested. Design for the ability to add decals to ships is underway. Some of the bugs in the newly introduced station system have been fixed. An issue where buying custom ships created new saves when they weren't needed has been fixed. Item descriptions should now show correctly in the Spaceship Designer. Paint tool brush visualizer now ignores hidden layers and raycasts hit the paintable parts and parts durability is now updated when a material type is changed. Animation changes this week are work on updating all first person relaxed animations continue. First person animations polished for the anti-gel, assault rifle, battle rifle, gauze rifle, laser rifle and rail rifle. And emote chest pound and emote A are in the making. For this week's weapon art we have reload effect has been made for the pistol. For the rail rifle the particle spawn and scale rates adjusted to work better at greater distances and a shock pulse has been added to the weapon. For the flamethrower, the particle spawn and scale rates adjusted to work better at greater distances as well. And the same for the bolt which has the same changes and a shock pulse also has been added to it. For the long rifle we have reload and shockwave effect has been added, the distance settings of particles tweaked, and the minigun reload and shoot exhaust has been added. For station art this week updates include VIS HQ LOD and FAR LOD models have been updated to floors sky deck, office, office base, generator room and loading dock B. The marketplace has received a couple of updates. The observation deck and intersection room LODs have been updated and LODs have been created for exterior holograms. And lastly other updates this week are all FCU models and MFC now have matching device field names by default. Moon fogs have been adjusted to not be so heavy. YOLO chip should no longer clip through the device rack chip reader. The Dreadnought armor set texture quality polish and paint jobs have been updated. The Red Brigand unique armor set coloring adjusted slightly because of the Dreadnought paint job update. And the Juggernaut armor set texture quality update is in progress. No feature video this week but don't forget if you do get into closed alpha be sure to send any funny or awesome clips and recordings my way for a chance to be featured on the channel. Feel free to contact me via discord or come jump on my discord server which is also home to my faction the kbots should you be looking for one to join. As always please smash that like button, share the video with your friends and faction, leave a comment to any questions you want answers for and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator out.